All right, ladies and gents, welcome. We've got a very snowy map here, uh, which is very fitting uh, for some people anyways, depending on where you're from right now. Uh, we have some low ELO legends on Black Forest. Black Forest, the map was voted into the 1v1 pool last week. I had that awesome video about the pincer move. If you haven't already seen that, highly suggest you check that out because that's awesome. Um, and we have more action here. Now we've got lower ELO than what we saw in the pincer move video. It's become a bit harder for me, and I'll probably be making a video about this, to do what I do and to follow the scene and know information about the players since some of the profiles recently went down and that has not been addressed. But I can tell you that Curry, Curry Muncha, <laughs> Curry Muncha has four wins and 14 losses and comes in at 550 ELO. And then either Red genuinely has zero games, and this is Red's very first ranked game, uh, or it's just a little pop-up that I get in-game wasn't working, which happens from time to time, which is why I'm a little uncertain on the player's ELO. Um, anyways, Blue is experienced, and I talked about this in that video. Uh, you could wall up and you can sneak, and look what Blue has done. Blue almost maybe showing me he watched said video because Blue not only walled up and is sneaking the villager, but Blue also has brought the scout back to get the sheep. If you watch the, the game that I'm going to reference a million more times, the player couldn't get his own sheep then, and his eco was really bad. And that is a lumber camp. <laughs> oh, wait, Blue, put it right there. It's a perfect spot. Ah, oh, come on. Right up against the trees, please. All right. Well, Blue's going to place a lumber camp that I wouldn't necessarily suggest, but Blue also forgot houses, and Blue also is taking the sheep away from the town center. And guess what? It's all good because we're in low elo territory, my friends. Blue's actually going to make the house here. And red's going to have the faster start, I would say. Um, what, who, who said it? Who, someone gave me information. According to AWE Insights, he has one game played last week and he lost. Okay, so that would be about red. So again, apologies. They don't have a lot of info about these players, but that's kind of the exciting part, right? We don't really know what their strategy preferences are or their skill level. But, I mean, so far, so good for red. Four on wood is pretty standard. Uh, especially with Malians, because your wood buildings are cheaper, right? So it makes life very easy to afford things later on. And red just doesn't have a clue that there's a wall here. It doesn't have a clue that there's a villager here either. So definitely things to think about. And, hey, blue actually deleted the lumber camp and replaced it. This is as good as it gets for a lumber camp, guys. The only thing that could be arguably better is here. Uh, let me give you an example. So um, let's look for a flat line of wood. Um, there's none that are perfectly flat. Okay, let's just say... Uh, I'm looking around the mini-map here, okay? So if you were to place a lumber camp directly on this wood line, you chop a couple trees around, chop a couple trees around, then you end up taking the trees like right here, right? Lumber camp here, chop these trees, chop these trees, chop these trees. Then you need to make a new lumber camp for efficiency. If you place Lumber Camp like this, this is that straight line, right? So I consider these to be like kind of like free trees, right? You chop through those trees, and then you still have the same type of Lumber Camp that you would have placed in the first place on a straight wood line over here. So if you can find an area to, to smoosh it in there, really cram it in, it can end up being very good. Anywho, uh, that's a lot of information about Lumber Camps. Currently 15 villagers for uh, our unranked player, Red. And I wanted to see, does Red have any extra boars? Because something you can do on this map is you can find the extra boars and... Oh! <gasps> Interesting. Okay, why are the... I don't know why the villagers are going this way. I believe Red just clicked that villager to go make a mill where those boars are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And no, that's not good dating advice, Nick. Get out of here. This is going to get fascinating because Red's like, oh, there's six boars right there. That would be a lot of food. Man, Black Forest is a peaceful map. I'm so glad I'm playing this game. You don't get to see, you don't have to worry about scouting. You don't have to worry about the enemy because Black Forest is a map of peace. I am loving life. And this villager is going to walk over here. And this villager is going to get stuffed or blocked off by the houses. And I'm wondering if Red ever realizes this. Yep, there she is. Now, now she's trying to walk to build the mill, and she can't build it. So she's going to show up as idle now, and wait, all the, fr <laughs> all the friends are coming over here as well. <laughs> so it's a party. 
Now, Red has a couple choices here, right? Red could, well, attack it. Or Red could just wall it off and leave it there. But Red's reaction is to make a barracks. Red is not happy about this. <laughs> and is Red going to make militia as well? You would assume so, right? Because Red has made... Okay, Red's just going to chop wood there. And Red's also going to make militia. Alright, so what's Blue up to? Blue obviously has seen that, and Blue is very distracted. Blue needs to bring in a boar. You're Mongols, Blue, so you want all the boars you can get. Here we go. That's going to be eaten so quickly. And uh, Blue also is going to take some berries, which is never bad. Meanwhile, we're just going to have Villager boxing, Scout standing, and then Militia attacking, and the... Villager that has snuck in here. We got to give this villager a name. I don't know if anyone has suggestions. But whatever his name is. First off, put a shirt on, dude. It's cold outside. There's snow. Uh, he's just going to repair the houses. So, I would say in many ways that this is worth it. Also, what happened to the villager? Okay, the villagers that made the lumber camp said we don't want to chop wood because we already have enough wood. And so now they are taking the deer. This is hectic, man. Clive, Malcolm, Barry. Great suggestions. Ronald? He looks like a Ronald. And then his friends call him Ron for short. Yeah, definitely. I think Ronald's also a very Mongol name, right? It feels like there's something that Genghis... <laughs> I guess Genghis Khan was actually Mongol, but anyways. Um, you know, Ronald running around in those, uh, in those hordes would make sense. Alright, so is Blue's on the way up to Feudal Age. Blue's also made a barracks. Now, the beauty of being in Blue's position is that you can just delete this and run right in and rush. Genghis Ron, I like it. You just rush it down. So, like, you know he has army. You also can't see any walls, right? I mean, it is possible that red could be walled here, but that would be my suggestion in these instances. Because when people see your wall, they just assume you want to be safe. So turning that around on them and surprising them is often one of the best things you can do. It will be interesting, though, because I think Ron here might make an archer range. Because we've got a couple villagers on gold. The barracks is already built, and nothing's being made out of it. It'd be funny to me, too, that like Blue would commit everything to defending this area. Blue's going to make an archer range, isn't he? See? Red is on the way to Feudal Age as well. Red does have more villagers at the moment. Now, has Red scouted to see if this is walled yet? Red has not, but it looks like Red is... Yeah, okay, so Red's going to try and wall this up and is going to run into walls and then should just wall behind it. He's going to make an archer range here. I, you know what's cracking me up about this is that the Mongols normally would want these boars, right? Okay, you're going to make... What are you doing here? Oh, I see. So Blue's expecting to lose the house, uh, the house here. And so Blue is going to make an archer range. He's going to make a house here. And just try and keep the villager alive. Interesting. And now Red is going to wall there as we expected. And this is where the ecos are going to fall apart a little bit, guys. Like, there's tons of wood right now for Red. So obviously Red could put that into farms. But that's a lot of work. And they're very distracted with this. Same thing with Blue. Like Blue's like, oh man, what do I do for economy here? But they are making it work. It's not bad. Couple houses over there for red, house there for red. Blue's making archers. Uh, Chris, what's up? It is a known bug at the moment that uh, notifications, like live notifications, aren't working for whatever reason for some people on uh, on the streaming platform. I would suggest using Discord because I always ping in Discord. You can go to the rules channel and just opt into the, the ping there if you use Discord, that is. All right. Again, this is so funny to me that the Mongo player is, like, trying so desperately to hold this position. Also, is there a hole there? No, there's not. Yeah, all you'd want to do is just pop your archers out on the other side of the range, and you're, you're safe. Red should definitely pull back here. This is their first real attack of the game. The first time any units have, have lost blood. And Red sees this now. And Red's like, why can't I get in there? That's a tiny tree, but nope. The red just decides to sit there. Now, it's probably best just to take out these houses, to be honest. There's a blacksmith for blue. 
Red really needs farms. Okay, so now Red's gonna do that. So Red's gonna lose this entire army because he's placing farms. But I think it's still good. Also, I have a sneeze incoming. I would try and remember to turn away from the mic. Okay, now Red backs away. And Red's like, well, shoot. Well, now I've got archers to worry about. And that could really bother Red. Hmm. Also, here's another thing. I don't know if Blue knows that you can delete stuff. That is, that is something that definitely comes with time. You can delete your own buildings. But I used to think that was crazy. But I remember like a year and a half ago, two years ago, some people brought that up to me in comments and were like, hey, I, I didn't remember you could delete stuff. Oh, man. By the way, I just freaked out. You could chop through here. And if they really think about that, how easy would that be to place a lumber camp and chop through? Dang. Okay, you would think that this would be an opportunity for Blue to move out, right? He was killing Militia, but Blue says, no. I'm not ready for that. I've got to do other things, and the other things include stonewalling here. Which is always wise, I suppose, if you expect to get rushed. 26 villagers for blue, 22 villagers for red, and I have to hand it to the matchmaking system because the idle TC time is so close. These players are definitely evenly matched right now. Keep in mind that red does have wheelbarrow, which is going to make the farming eco a bit more efficient. That said, red doesn't have as many farms, so we'll see where this goes. The players obviously know enough, right? Like... They don't seem to have excess of resources. They're doing a good job to balance it out. Like Red realizing, I need more food. I have lots of wood. Let's place some beautiful farms. Aha, if T90 watches this, he can't even place farms like that. Ha ha ha. I like to think that that's some, something that people think. I know you guys. Uh, he's going to make some skirmishers now. And has been taking out Blue's houses here. And Blue is even going so far as to make a tower. <laughs> Will Blue ever eat the boars? I, I don't think so, but this is certainly going to live in Red's mind, and Red's going to be really paranoid about this area. And that tower actually has fletching, and the militia pull away. Good job, Red, with the micro. I would just build a mill there, weaken the boar with the archers, and kill it with the villager to take the food. See, I thought about that, but that's actually not so easy. I think what might be easier is actually using the tower, because the boar doesn't attack the tower, and it would attack your archers. But even then, you have to get the timing right with one villager. I think the odds are that you would probably just end up killing the boar with the tower or the archers, and then you can't take food from it then. Look, even repairing that archer range. This is blue's everything. Blue's also going to make an outpost. Blue is on the way to the next age. Very decent uptime for their elo. And uh, we'll see what the plan is. No villagers on stone at the moment for blue. Uh, if I had to guess, though, Blue is going to send these villagers to stone. Blue's going to need a task for these villagers right after the berries. I can just feel it. Now, Red could also have just walled this. Oh, whoa! Oh, my God! Stone now, too? Oh, man, can you imagine that back-to-back -back prediction? Holy crap. Anyways, yeah, Red should just wall this. And then you don't have to worry about making defensive army, at least to the same level. You would think if you're not going to be aggressive, you're going to boom. Okay, I was wrong. Red's going to... Blue's going to make farms here. What a good game, man. I'm really happy with, like, the mixture of... We had Amazon Tunnel last month, now Black Forest. It's so fun to have in the map pool. Of course, it's not something that I will favorite all the time or leave open all the time as a player myself, but it's good to have that variety as an option. And I think these maps, they just take us back, right? Take us back to the good old days. The no-rush maps are, are the type of maps that I think the majority of viewers and players actually prefer. Okay, there are villagers to stone. All right, so that's good. Still very curious what this villager is going to do. Where is Ron? Oh, Ron is inside the tower now, hanging out with the archers. All right. Good on you, Ron. Um, okay, wood upgrade, farm upgrade. I like that a lot. Could go for a siege workshop and try and siege the walls and, and really be aggressive here. But is not doing that. Doesn't know what the enemy has behind the walls, of course. 
The last thing you want to do is break down the walls and then find they've got a bunch of army and you don't. Like the eco focus from both players. Red on the way up, getting the stone mining and gold mining tech. Not mining stone at the moment, but you know, someday that'll happen. And if anyone was in a position to drop two or three town centers once they arrived to Castle Age, it would be red. And the wood cost is cheaper for his civilization. Where are these villagers going? Mm, what's the, what are these villagers going to do? Yeah, the TCs would be cheaper, plus you have the stone. And you have plenty of food as well. There's a town center for blue. There's a monastery for blue. Red, please tell me you're going to chop through here. That would be so epic. Red might actually make a TC here. And might not even be intending to chop through, but might end up doing it by mistake over time. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> Now, usually when you build a TC, the villagers are going to go to the closest resource. And I always, you know, this is an interesting little experiment. Because is it the closest resource to the villagers? Or is it the closest resource to the town center? Because the closest resource to the town center is the wood. I was going to try and be all informative and tell you guys it's the closest resource to the town center. But then I second-guessed myself. And it might actually be the closest resource to the villagers. So we're going to find out here in a second. Anyways, Ron is still in there with his archer friends. They're shooting down the lumber camp. Second town center's up for blue. More villagers on the way. Next TC's coming up for blue, which will again mean more villagers. More farming eco as well. The economies are really going to be flying now. There's another TC. They both like their farm TC's. They don't like to build their town... town blah, 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 blah. They don't like to build their town centers. Sorry. Just tripped over my own tongue. Uh, next to the resources, which you would normally suggest... In Blue's defense, though, there's hills everywhere, which would make it extremely awkward. For Red, I feel like, you know, Town Center here or here would make a lot of sense. Okay, they went to the gold. So it's the closest resource to the villagers. But yeah, he also could have had a command queue on it, too. So Red doesn't want to chop through, then, is what I'm seeing. Now, the thing about Black Forest that can be really awkward is the fairness with the relics and then also with the extra golds. <laughs> here, here comes red. Red's going to try and see if there's anything around here with some siege. Yeah, there's five relics. So you can see a relic here and then relic here for blue. And then boom and boom for red. And the other one is actually in this little area with the boars. I mean, in theory... This is better for blue, because blue could maybe, like, get this relic and get some gold income from it. But obviously, it's going to take a lot of time. And no, Red, you cannot manganel down trees. A lot of people think you can do that because their memories told them that that was the case. But you would need to have Onager. Now, back in the day, you would need to actually have Siege Onager to take out trees. And Onager didn't even do it. So that change was, I think, very good for the game. But yeah, an even match, guys. An even match. We have two kills, zero deaths. Those two kills belonging to Blue. Blue gonna snag these relics. You can see two monks, two relics on the way to the monastery right now. And we have a monastery, which will be for monks, I'm sure. And then a university, possibly for some techs. But you'll notice Red is chopping the tree to the north of this TC. So I assume Red has thought about this and does not want to overchop. Oh, but the villagers, when they finish the tree, have come this way anyway. Oh, boy. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Also, I'm excited to see what Red ends up doing with the siege. All right, so house is going to go down. More houses for Red. I like it. Red is all about queuing up villagers. Uh, 14 villagers in queue right now. And still floating a lot of resources, too. So that's awesome. Oh, God. Oh, my God. No. Please tell me this is a mistake. <laughs> blue, I think, needs houses. <laughs> and Blue is making mills instead. Now, this could be intentional because Blue thinks it looks cool. <laughs> 
but I'm guessing that there's a hotkey issue. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, there we go. Blue realized after the first one was completed. <laughs> Deletes the mills and is now going to place the houses in the exact same spot. Oh, man. I don't know. Like, I'm, I guess I'm happy for this player that they realized that early. But it would have been really funny if all the mills completed before Blue realized. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a, a story, a, a blast from the past story. Uh, and I probably... Oh, my God. Red is really paranoid about this. And Red's going to drop a castle here. All right, so I'm going to tell this story. Uh, but you all have to agree that you're never going to try this in an online game. Okay? All right? So you all agree? Perfect. Perfect. So, especially back in the day when it was peer-to-peer -peer and there were no servers, and when PCs were a lot worse, uh, you could, like, lag out and crash the game if you made too many mills or too many docks. So basically, um, certain civilizations' mills... Uh, look at the Malian mill. No, so, see, this this mill just has, like, the ox going around, and then the other, the Mongol mill has the water. But the mills that have the windmill, you know, going around in circles, um, that animation multiplied by 800 was enough to completely destroy the game, right? Just too many mills meant that there was too much going on, and the game would end. So, blue... Stacking that many mills together made me think of it. Now, the worst one, if you had to think of the worst building in terms of game lag, what would you guys say? I'd be curious as well, when this hits YouTube eventually, don't cheat, but I want to hear what your guess was before I say something. Because there is another building that could really have that effect. Anyways, Red really wants to break through here. The tower with Ron and his friends shot the mangonel, so now the range is slowly going down. This could prompt Ron to hop out and make a building? Um, Blue also has not clicked up to the Imperial Age yet. Uh, blacksmith? Uh, no, it's not the blacksmith. It's not farms. Yeah, okay, somebody guessed it, the dock. Because of the birds. Yeah, so there- whoa, sorry my screen, like, flickered there. But yeah, the birds on the dock was also a big- big issue with lag but again this is when you get like 500 plus of them right it's, it wasn't super easy and i truly hasn't haven't tested it on de but i imagine that aspect could still be awkward all right so that's open now red still has the mill foundation there from earlier this is going to be open and i don't know if red knows that this overchop is happening blue certainly doesn't see it blue has no clue Manganel is getting hit by Ron and his friends inside the tower yet again, and the Manganel is likely going to go down. And there it goes. Red is making a trebuchet, though. <laughs> Red has really not been happy about this. But I think Red can treb it down from over the wood line, and then Red can um, run in with the skirmishers and kill everything. Blue is dropping barracks. So I think Blue might be considering some infantry here. Obviously not really sure what either player is going to commit to in the long term. But Red does love skirmishers, it seems. But how much of that is just because his opponent... Oh, watch out, Boars. How much of that is because his opponent has made archers? We won't know. Oh, God. <laughs> Did he misclick the Boars or what? Because now it stopped firing. <laughs> I think he tried to click the tower, and the boar was so close to it, he clicked the boar. <laughs> and look, this boar is running away. <laughs> Guys, this boar has been in this area the whole game, and the second his friend dies, watch what he does. He's like, hmm, this is a good spot to be in. Nope, we're gonna, we're leaving now. <laughs> oh, man, this game is getting far too realistic. Man, way, way to go, devs. Okay. I'm still Red a little uncertain on moving out here. And Red's probably going to look back here and be like, why is that tower still there? I clicked the trebuchet. My trebuchets don't work. This game doesn't make any sense. Also, didn't there used to be six boars? Oh, God, the boar's coming back. I thought there were six. 
Um, we're seeing some blacksmith upgrades now for blue, but I'm a little concerned that a lot of this is late for blue. You see blue's stacking them. Okay, now the tower is starting to go down, so there we go. And that tower is going to go down, and the units are all going to die, and... There will be no funeral for Ron, because the enemy's just going to spit on his corpse and say he's good for nothing, but Ron will die in red. Ron accomplished a lot in this game. Rip for Ron. That villager definitely, like, forced Red's hand into skirmishers here. So it would have been epic if Blue went for something that countered skirms. Also, what just happened over here? Bear with me, please. Wasn't there not a castle there? Oh, okay, he started to build it, and then he thought twice and said, I need that area to be open. Okay, that's understandable. And now deletes the barracks as well. Mm. I'm a little confused. Uh, we already saw some of this, forgive me. Uh, but I want to see what Blue's decisions are back here. The lack of space on Black Forest can be really frustrating. If Red is cut through... Does Red know this? I, I would guess that Red has, just isn't paying attention to this. Obviously, neither is Blue. Blue, are you going to make a castle, by the way? Is that is that something you want? Because I think you would really benefit from a castle. Ooh, okay. Heavy Cav Archer and Parthian Tactics. So he wants to go Cavalry Archers. Mongol Cav Archers do fire faster. I would say it's always disappointing when you have to go Cav Archers over the Mangadai because the Mangadai out of your castle is a superior unit. Not that the Mongol Cav Archers are bad, though. They're still really good. We have Supplies now for Red. Bloodlines, and now we have archer armor as well. So, this these are just barracks and stable technologies. This isn't necessarily telling me what Red's going to commit to, but I don't even think Red knows yet. We're going to have some men-at-arms after this. Malian infantry does have higher pierce armor, so, so it makes it very strong. Hmm. Pierce armor is obviously good against archers. And now we have Fortified Wall from Lil Curry Muncha. By the way, I appreciate the houses down here for blue. So I just made a video on the most useless unique techs in AB2. And in said video, Nomads, the technology for the Mongols, where if you lose your houses, you don't lose your pop space. That was on that list. It would be so much my, like my life and so fitting to just have blue research that and then delete the houses. Is it worth it for Blue to do that? Not really. Unless you're, like, under a big space constraint, but... Let's see how much vision Blue gets from this mining camp. This is important. I think it's going to be a decent amount of vision. <gasps> Uh-oh. And Red doesn't see any of that. And whoa, 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 whoa! Red's going to drop a castle here the very second! Dang, okay, Red. Sheesh. I mean, Red Red must have finally noticed I overchopped this. Red obviously doesn't know about the villagers. So that tells me the majority of the fighting is actually going to take place over here then. Hmm. I mean, Blue should realize right away because the villagers will probably get shot down. And then also the mining camp will get hit many times here. So I think kind of like how Blue's sneak over here forced Red's hand to be aggressive... I think that this sneak is actually going to help Blue start to make some army. Because right now, Blue's like, I've got so much time, I don't have to worry. But yeah, there you go. The villagers die, the mining camp's getting hit. And now Blue notices and is like, holy crap, we don't want to chop wood there. Let's go to the other side. And now the response from Blue should be to make trebuchets and should be to make army. Keyword should. As we see another castle now from Red. And Red's coming in with Gabettos. Look at these ladies run with their knives. They're not really knives. It's more like a like a hatchet. How would you describe this weapon? Wait till they turn. Oh, they have a knife too? Oh, they just got one in each hand. Sorry, it's a little blurry. I don't know how you describe that. It looks like a some type of hatchet. Anyways, it's pretty epic. Okay, now Blue... Is making has made a mangonel 
is getting more blacksmith upgrades. Is getting siege engineers, which is good. It gives the siege extra range. I think some people this ELO research siege engineers thinking it's murder holes, but it would be helpful. And really needs trebuchets. Like, this is an invitation right now if you're blue to treb down that castle because you have your own castle to protect your trebs. It's called a Kapinga. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Man-at-arms, skirmishers, and gabettos. Look at this army comp. This is really good from Red. He's starting to take out the houses from Blue now. Now we have Onager from Blue. Onager would actually be, be good against all this, but the problem is the castle fire. So you need trebuchets as well. And I know a lot of people out there, in these moments, because I read my comments, start to be like, Oh, so frustrating. Oh, this player's not doing anything. They're stressed out. You're stressed out. Blue's like, I gotta get things ready. I'm still making vills. Let's get Elite Mangadai now. Just make a new lumber camp, because that's cool. Blue's trying to remember all the different things, but is kind of failing to push. But at the same time, so is Red, right? Red took a position, but now Red says, you know what? I need to relax a little bit. I need to chill. We, we got a position. Now let our people rest. It's unnatural for them to go into another battle immediately after. All right. More barracks, though. I, I can't wait for when Blue's actually going to produce things out of these barracks. Because Blue's been making barracks the whole game, it feels like. There's a hole there. There's a... Oh, wow. Look at Blue. The attention to detail here is epic. And now there's a treb behind the wood line. And Blue's even going to back it up a little bit. Really smart thinking. So I think Red did a good thing to, to run in. But the problem is you've got to follow it up, right? Because now you're giving Blue time. But lower elo games is a little bit more turn-based in Age of Empires 2, right? At least that's the way I see it. I hope that doesn't come off as disrespectful. But like you attack me, then we wait. I attack you, then we wait. That's what it feels like. Even though we know these guys are doing a bunch of different things. Especially their economies. Their economies have been really good. And yep, naturally, we get nomads now from Blue. Naturally, a week after I make that video of how kind of useless that is, we see that. And I still maintain it is fairly useless here. Like, obviously, I'm not helpful in most situations, but... I guess if your houses are down here, it might actually be helpful. These villagers collected something. I forget if it was gold or stone. It must have been stone. And they were sent to repair that castle, which is now down. And Red is going to be extremely stubborn here. And try and go treb v treb. But that is simply not a battle that Red can win. And so Red went from a, what I considered to be a winning position. To throwing away a castle. And now throwing away some trebuchets. And now Red's probably stressed. This is still only Palisade Walls from Red, by the way. <laughs> There's not a lot stopping Blue from running through there if Blue wishes to. Now Red's got some camels. The Gabetters are now taking out the houses. Okay, I take it back. Nomads is actually kind of worth it here, maybe. Especially because everything's so cramped over here. Choo Choo Train, I don't want to talk about it, but nice to have you here. Happy to see you. Uh, we could see Siege Onager possibly for blue. The Mongols only get stronger from here. Red, much like earlier in the game, uh, when blue got pressured and then blue responded, red is now like, I need to pick it up here. So we're going to have, we have Trebs on the way. Something that's concerning about red though is that you've got two castles and yet one castle is producing Trebs. And we've got two Siege Workshops and one's producing Bomber Cannons. Then again, I guess the other one is producing, is, is researching Onager, so you do have that. Yo, Cormac, thank you for the year. Also, Catherine, thanks for the year as well. Here's a long time. The year flew by, didn't it? As for me, anyways. Again, losing these houses doesn't actually affect your pop space now. Maybe one of the rare instances where Nomads is probably a go-to tech. Blue's making more barracks. Blue just, like, scatters the buildings all around. Doesn't like to put them all in the same spot. Look at the stables. Again, I think it's due to lack of space, though. Yeah, Mongols do not get bomber cannons. So this could be a problem. What a great choice from Red. Oh, man. 
This is such a sick decision to go Bomber Cannon. Wow, these guys, like, low elo is just beastly. What a great decision. My word. So, red's gonna still have trebuchets. Might lose one or two of them. And then could maybe push the castle. And blue's gonna have to use these Mangadai guys. Mangadai, one of the best units you can have. And yeah, now blue realizes it. And blue's not happy. Now we go to red's perspective. Red's like, I'm so good at this game. And now the Mangadai show up. And the Mangadai have a bonus against Siege. And look at these things. Yeah, these bomber cans didn't stand a chance, and that's that's more expensive than losing the trebs. 225 wood and 225 gold per bombard cannon. Now, something you should bring up about Malians is that their gold lasts 80% longer. So the longer the game goes, the better it is for them as far as gold. And now Siege Honors are on the way as well. But let's see how these Gabettos fare. They're very fragile compared to the Mangadai. However, I think they'll do pretty good because blue is, uh, it doesn't have bloodlines yet. Uh, I'm kind of wrong. The manga dice still destroy. It's not even close. <laughs> I'm very wrong. But yeah, uh, on the topic of, you know, what blue could do better, bloodlines would give these things 20 more HP. Elite Skirm should do a pretty good job. Blue probably could just use Noninger here. It does have the Onagers. Oh, it's 30% longer? It might as well be 150% longer, at least from a high-level standpoint, because that bonus has just not suited the Malians in high-level games. But I can see how it uh, it suits the Malians here. Also, just a small thing. It's not like red is hurting for gold, but I would like to see red get this relic. That'd always be nice. Oh, man. Siege Onager is such a game-changer here. Unless blue makes Hussar. Like, that's the go-to unit for blue at the moment. Blue has stables. Is getting bloodlines as well. It does not cost gold to make scouts or light cav or hussar, depending on if you've upgraded them, right? They're all the same type of unit. Um, anyways, here comes the onager. There's no onagers yet for red. Speedy onager gets shot down. Mangadai on the hill. Mangadai uncertain on what to do. Mangadai are scared. Are they going to be Manga dead? We have no repairs here. We've got four trebuchets from red. That's the number I preach, guys. That's the number you want to go with. Usually, it's going to result to you taking out the castle, even if you end up losing your siege. But blue's just getting overrun right here. Blue does not have the numbers. Blue is, does not have the gold, actually. And red's going to take out four more trebuchets or three more trebuchets from blue, just like we saw before. Now, if only the camels or something were here, right? The camels are kind of the protectors of the realm. See if these bomber cannons will actually take out the trebs. I feel like it's really important here. And all oh, the trebs are all stacked together as well. That's so sad. Oh, uh, well. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. Blue holds. And red has lost more trebuchets than blue has. And now we have an onager coming in. Man, if only blue... Oh, big shot! If only blue could manage using the stables at the same time here. That would be so nice here. And the, the, the Gabetto are elite, and they're angry because their friends died before, and they were not happy about that. And so here they are trying to get their revenge. More eco for red. More gold in the bank for red. Red just seems to be in the better spot as long as you know this game continues as we're seeing right now. And this is a sign that Blue realizes if I lose this position, I lose the game. Blue knows how important castles are with the Mongols. And whoa, Blue actually backs away. What the? What? Okay, well, Blue's just gonna make it in the same spot and now ring the bell because he's, I think he spotted the camels. And I guess we'll see. I mean, Elite Mangadai is insane, right? If red doesn't move in and take out these castles soon, you never know. But what red's doing a better job of is producing. Like the Gabettos are in full queue. Mangadai are not. And a lot of this comes down to the lack of gold, right? Okay, now I believe that was a delete. But of course there, blue lost so much stone because blue had already built so much of it. Can we look at that idle TC time for a second? How crazy is that? There is... What, like a five or six second difference between their idle TC time from throughout this whole game? 
Oh! Micro from blue. Blue's a god. Blue can do it. Blue's a beast. Well played. And is now producing scouts. However, if these would be like have, it'd be awesome. Or if these things here were to be pikemen. Nice to see these buildings that were built up actually in use, though. Looks like the light cab upgrade will eventually come in, so it wouldn't surprise me. Yep, Pikeman's in queue as well. The blue is now resorting to mixing in trash units, which is a good decision. But actually, will be very complicated if red continues to make the Gabetto. And red's, red's still got gold to mine, right? Yep, still gold to mine there. Still gold to mine here that red hasn't really been taking. Both players, though, could be using the market. Both players could be selling some food or excess wood to get gold. Just not something they're as used to at this ELO. This has surpassed my expectations in terms of skill for this ELO. I'll be honest with you. But these guys have played really well. And, yeah, the Onager's going to go for the Trebs. The Scouts now come in. The Mangadai will get hit. Uh, Lightcap upgrade comes in as well, though. And look at that. You've got Lightcap, you've got Pikeman, and the Gabetto aren't all here. It says there's 40 Gabetto. I don't see them. And that's actually a really good fight for Blue. Also, Blue has pretty decent blacksmith upgrades. The only thing he's missing would be the armor on the infantry. But look at that! Oh my god! Right when you think one of these players is going to go down, the other one just responds. This is a beautiful game. Now, what I would do if I'm Blue after that is I just make a lot more pikemen and light calf, right? I wouldn't focus on anything else necessarily. And where are the Gabetto? Okay, so I guess this is them. 45 of them. Keep in mind, it's a 45 HP unit. They've just got high attack. They'll kill whatever they hit, but can they stay alive? And we have some nice attention to detail from Red, as Red wants to repair the siege. And Red's now thinking, man, Lightcap's actually a great idea for me, too. <laughs> and the, uh, the Farimba upgrade is awesome with the Malians. It would take the camels to seven, instead of seven plus two, seven plus seven. And then it would be seven plus seven as well for the light calf. But we'll see if that actually ends up being researched. I mean, the stables are here, so you've got to think light calf are going to be produced at the very least. Okay, good upgrades here from blue to get some armor. See if blue can produce out of these stables. You never know at this elo. Red also did place a castle here in order to block that choke point. Something blue could actually see. But it actually makes sense if you're blue to just send one treb there. You don't have to be too crazy with it. Obviously, blue is very distracted with this at the moment. And oh man, that's such a crazy army. Oh! More like have her in the queue now. Both players paying very close attention. This is kind of like a micro battle now. There's a lot of different elements they've got to work on. I think it'll be easier for Blue to get the most out of the Micro because of melee and range, but the Gabettos shred the Light Cav. And what did I say? Uh, easier for who? I, I definitely said easier for Red, right? The Gabetto are very strong there. And the Light Cav, while they are throwaway units, there was just not enough of them. I like this, though, from Blue. Blue sending in the Pikemen now to take out the Bomber Cannons. Oh! Oh! Oh, save the day here, Onager! Save the day! Ah! That's so sad. <laughs> that is so, so sad. But look at Blue! The bonus against Siege pays off, and the Mangadai number is actually decently high. And a lot of the Lika Beta are gonna go down. Now, uh, Red and Blue are already, like, thinking about what they're gonna do next. And Red's going to go Spearman. Again, not Pikes. This is the same thing that happened earlier in the game to Blue. Okay, let's see if Blue can redeem himself with this Oninger shot. Nope. Okay, it's just waiting there. And there's Farimba now for Red as well. We are not finished yet, guys. It's definitely like a skill element to this now. It's like, what's your... Like, post-Imperial Age is about eco-management, but also production... And then also the micro. And both players, you're seeing their elo because, you know, they're not able to produce while fighting at the same time. I'm still going to give red the edge, though, because red can get this relic eventually. 
Uh, because the gold's gonna last longer for red. And also because red always queues more. That's honestly the difference in my mind. Is red doesn't hesitate to just spend a bunch of resources. I haven't seen blue queue more than 20 of any unit. That said, blue is getting siege on right now. And Mongol siege on are so speedy. They can catch up to anything. Oh, man. This is going to be good. Uh, Krillin, hello. I'm doing great. Hope you're doing well. There's the speedy on And again, the on doesn't really land. But when it does, it's exciting stuff. Keep in mind, blue is not maxed out yet. Red is pretty much maxed out. Everything we've seen from red is pretty much everything that red can do with its civilization. Blue doesn't even have Hussar yet. You do have 100 HP on your light calf, but if you can get Hussar, what do they have, like 100 HP? I think it's 110 or something. I actually forget. I know it's not 98. I know Mongols have more HP on their Hussars and forget the specific numbers. Will Blue think about pushing the middle as well, right? Like, trebbing this down and running in with Hussars could be really good. Red's ready. And Red's also protecting the trebuchets here. I like this. Taking out the outpost is actually a good play. Watch it from Blue's perspective. Look what losing the outpost does. Red's trying to bait his opponent in here towards the pikemen. And these onagers are about to be siege onagers, so their shots are going to wreck the pikes. And yeah, most of the pikemen are going to die here. And Blue says, You've, you're the one who's been baited here. Nice treb shot. Wow, really good micro. Wow, this is insane. The way they're using their units on the front lines to run in and out all the time is impressive. Now would be the time to sacrifice, sacrifice Lightcap for the siege. Yup, yup, there you go, Blue. Very well played. This war is all in all the siege onagers going down. And Red has all this army, but Red's army's not accomplishing near as much, and Red's terrified and is gonna get the heck out of there with the trebs. This is interesting. Blue cut the trees. Because Blue didn't like the choke point. And yeah, this this is where Mongols just become it, it feels like impossible to stop. Now, again, what we're not seeing here from Red is, is the Farimba light cap. I think that'd be really strong with all that food. Now, Red's going to cut the trees. <laughs> okay. Oh, Blue's going to drop a castle there. Oh, nice micro. Oh. Nice micro from Red as well there. Very good. I'm going to sip my water here as we wait. Remember, it's 200 pop cap, right? So they both have so much more space they could fill. Their late game is better than any other aspect of their game. These guys are beasts in this age. Look, Mangadai run in. You can understand what Red was thinking. Red was like, I need something that it has a bit more range. And that's why you would make Bombard Cannons. <laughs> their micro is genuinely insane. I'm glad Blue didn't make a castle here. I know Blue wanted to, but I, that would have been a really poor move. Okay, Siege Runisher Micro. <laughs> Bombard Cannon Micro. Bombard Cannon takes it out. Wow. And then Bombard Cannon gets taken out by the SO. Every time there's Light Cav, though, it seems to make a difference, doesn't it? Okay... Still microing everywhere. This is wild, man. I feel like I'm watching top 100 level micro on Black Forest at the moment. Slight exaggeration, but still. These guys are late game gods. And I, I love this from Blue, though. Like, you have the meat shield in front, and then Mangadai destroy everything else. You don't really have to worry about the siege all that much, because you can outmaneuver it with Mangadai. And yeah, now Red's having some big problems on the front line. Range unit v range unit. And the Mangadai have the hill. Also, Blue has monks in there to heal up the Mangadai, which is always an underrated play. And maybe not something we see enough at even the high elos. Mangadai should just kill the, the siege at this point. It, this should all go down. One bomber cannon, two bomber cannons, three bomber cannons, four bomber cannons. Now there's four trebuchets to take as well. It'd probably be completely fine as well if you lose some of your Mangadai to the castle to kill all this siege. 
This is insane. Kill the siege, blue. There you go. Next trebuchet. Take this one and then run away. Okay. Not interested in taking the treb. Wants to maybe drop a castle here? But, guys, this is the problem. Blue's microwing, right? Oh, God, don't lose your castle. Don't lose your... Oh, you're so lucky. Blue's microwing, but blue doesn't have more units on the way. Red's like, I'm not finished yet, buddy, and red's making everything. So, I actually think red could push this back again. Back and forth, back and forth this game goes. Because, yeah, there's not a single unit on the way for blue, because blue is... Just enjoying the micro as well, I'm sure. Wow. Blue also has zero gold income from, like, natural sources. No mining income. Uh, does have the relics, of course, which is going to bring a little bit of gold. But if you can't make more Mangadai and you can't make more Siege, you are going to have some massive problems here. And Red knows it. And Blue's going to go in for the trebuchet again, but at what cost, right? Uh, definitely a mistake from Red there. I think, to, to go in with just one treb. But there's going to be more trebs on the way, and Red has the lead yet again. Wow. It, I love what Blue is thinking. You could tell that Blue is thinking, let's take a fight and then drop a castle in this position. But I think the important thing about that, as Blue backs away to the castle fire now, is you have to have the siege ready. So you, you place the castle, and then you've got the siege to push it all back. And Blue seems to be forgetting what was allowing the Mangadai to do so well, and that was the support units. As I stated earlier in this cast, like, Red does such a good job at producing. Even if it's just three archer ranges and three barracks or whatever, Red really cues it up. Even the castles as well with the Gabetto. And I think Blue is going to desperately run in here to try and take the Trebs. If Blue realizes that this castle is going to go down, and that could be the last of the Mangadai. And that could be the last of our blue player as well. It was four wins and 14 losses. 550 ELO. Obviously, probably didn't play many of those games on Black Forest. Seems to be suited for it in many ways. See, Jonagers are going to go in. Not a, the biggest fan of that move if you're from Red, but Red's going to actually maybe get away with it there. Nope. But in the end, the castle's going to fall for blue anyways, right? And there's still so many skirmishers here. There's no counter to skirmishers. And if this castle falls, it, if it falls, <laughs> and it does fall, blue might consider tapping out of this one. 90 minutes into the game, at least for in-game time. The pikes are just going to get shredded here. It really would have to be the light cap. And even then, you've got camels on the way from red, so red knows... I need a counter to the other thing. The other thing that could give me a problem. The other thing he could try. What a great game. No more Mangadai on the way. Only some pikes. These Mangadais are Manga dead. The pikemen don't really hold their own here. Bad against the Skirms. Bad against the Gabetto. That one Trev from Blue, though, has been insane. <laughs> That Trev is taking out three or four trebuchets from red. But the Trev will fall as well. 140 population for Koyunka. 76 population for blue. Who's clearly like having this moment of, oh man, I think I'm dead. What do I make? What do I do? It's going to be one siege onager. Blue is good micro, so I'm really excited to see what blue does with this. Could make a million light cap, but nope. Instead's gonna micro one siege onager. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> oh, repair! <laughs> we have limited gold! Limited gold saved. All right. <laughs> Again, blue. You could make other units here. Okay, it's gonna be pikemen now. Beastly micro from blue. A never say die attitude. <laughs> um, I think the number one thing blue's gonna remember from this cast though is man, do Mongols have good light cav, and you should definitely rely on them. There were some epic fights because of those light cav earlier. 
Especially because your opponent doesn't have any more pikes, right? This has swung before. But this definitely has the feeling of a game that will not swing again. That said, trying to see how much gold red has. Oh, red still has all this gold. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, so red mined a lot more gold in this game than blue did. Because of the map control. Alright. Here comes the Siege Onagers. They're speedy. And there they go. They dodge that shot. Okay, well, the Treb does takes care of that one. Okay, Blue. Still dodging. Not really wanting to fight. Is, is making light cap, though, which is exciting for me. I wonder if Blue doesn't use Shift to queue up units. I feel like there's a possibility there. And that could be part of the reason why red has so many units in queue and blue always has so few. Because, like, nine. That's a manual click of one individual unit, right? Whereas if you hold shift and click a unit, it queues up five at a time. I wonder if maybe that knowledge isn't there. But look at the difference the light cav have made. This is epic. Now, the Gabetta were going to do a better job against all this. But even still, the light cav were able to take out the skirms. Light cav have pushed the siege back. And now we've got more light cav on the way for blue. And there's 15, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe blue actually did shift Q then. Okay. It's not doing blue any favors that all the buildings are in different spots, so I think it's kind of awkward for blue to find where the buildings are. I didn't even know that until just now. Really? Choo choo train. You've been around for all these years. You didn't know about that. Well, there you go. You learned something new today. Red really hasn't wanted to make light calf. Uh, red is the option to do that, and light calf would be insane. <gasps> oh, the SO shots clear up all the Gabetto, and the light calf are going to mop up everything else. Now, here come the camels, and the camels are going to clear up the light calf. No problems. So that's a really good unit to have. But Pikeman will then be suddenly be good again from Blue. And Blue's going to wheel away with the speedy Onager. And now the Pikes are here. And there's actually no Gabetto anymore. This game might not be close to finished. I mean, the resources are still there for Blue. Who knows? Also, I, I really think it, like if you're really under pressure, if you're Blue, the second you take a good fight here... Try and go middle here. I think red would be completely distracted by it, and red wouldn't know what to do. Bam. Trep goes down. Nice shot there from blue. 30 pikes to protect that onager. 160 population for red. Still 100 for blue, who does, doesn't have as many working villagers. They both have siege onagers, though. And blue has the better micro. Dang. Pike v. Pikeman. Pointy, pointy, pointy. Poke, 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 poke. Nice onager shots from behind this, though. This is going to be much better for blue if it continues like this. Red's going to have to go snipe that. And blue knows it. And so blue's... <laughs> blue's wheeling away with it. The power of drill. All right. And now more pikes are on the way. 31 pikes. Blue's getting better. Well, it, they're very tunnel vision at the moment, and I, I can understand why they're tunnel vision. Bam! Bam! Siege Onager satisfying. Bam! Yeah, at this, at this rank, it makes sense that the players would be tunnel vision. But at least blue, like, at some point, you'd think that maybe blue would at least send one trip for this. I'm not even saying go full on fight there, but blue just hasn't noticed that. Because I think red would have to make buildings here, and then red might not fight here because of having to make the buildings at home. Red is making... Okay, so red might have a lot of resources, but red is making 5 trebs and 11 bombard cannons. So here's the resource difference for those that are wondering. That's a big difference with gold. But if it all goes down to two siege onagers and a bunch of pikemen, man, what a problem that could be. At least skirmishers are going to be out now. The skirmishers are going to be really helpful against the pikes. I think blue's micro is better, but I think red's uh, macro, so like economy, and also production is better. So it ends up being a pretty close 
and even matchup. Yeah. The Mangadai Micro was also really good while they were still alive. But the Onagers, man. Man, are they impressive. And hey, Blue's going to go this way. Nice shot from Blue. The Blue... Add, again, you don't need to commit everything because there's no way your opponent breaks through your walls. This is going to freak Red out a bit. Let's see what Red ends up doing here. Uh, it's, this is funny. The other Treb can't get in. <laughs> okay, so Red's going to get the attack signal. Now, what I'd suggest here is you want to dive in and fight with this army and then make more buildings here for the next fight. But Red is Red is very undecided. Do you see this? Red is very undecided. Red started to send a lot of the army back home instantly, guys. Instantly. And yeah, so Red is sending like 60 army away. This is like my number one tip that I've given people over the years is if you don't want someone to attack out your base, go to their base. So just two trebuchets did that, which could make Blue's defense so much easier now. That also could make life awkward because Red might start fighting there too, so we'll see. Anyways, Blue is paying attention to this. Blue, of course, does not know that Red has more army going to the other side. That'll be something that Blue finds out, I'm sure. Oh, God! Also, a lot of players kill their own units a lot with Siege Onagers, and Blue hasn't really done that. What a great attack there from Blue, who's now just going to click in after the Trebs as well. And now what's Red doing with this army? Okay, so Red's army's here. Blue, if he were to look, can see that. But I think Blue's feeling great right now after taking out so much, so many units. But it's not going to be the end of it here from Red. And now Red might think, well, I might as well attack at his gate. And then Blue might regret just reminding Red of that possibility. Pikemen obviously are going to go down. Blue makes more outposts for more vision on the area. It's 103 army versus 22. And that's been a consistent theme. Blue just does not like to queue up units. There we've got pikes again. But again, like 15 light caps. You've got 8,000 food. Just send, spending a couple extra seconds and just queuing up more would be so helpful. What's Blue's KD right now? Well, at the bottom left, it shows it. We have Light Cav v. Light Cav. Hey, nice to see Light Cav from Red. That's something we haven't seen yet. And, uh, well, a lot of the Light Cav are going to die there. But they could also... Oh! Nope, they die. Man, Blue is a god. <laughs> Little Curry Muncher is a god with the Onagers. Okay, also has a Treb here hitting the Lumber Camps. Very hard for players to fight on two sides at once. So I'm excited to see what Red tries here. What about selling some wood to buy Mangadai? Look at the snipe! <laughs> no way! <laughs> I, blue is my favorite. Now repair it. <laughs> oh my god. Blue is like the most frustrating, but also the most entertaining player at the same time. Yeah, both players could be using the market to sell wood and to sell food. But I don't know if that's something that all players know. Dang. Those three onagers have killed 87 units. 52, 35, and 0. So actually, it's two of them that have killed that. Okay, Red's starting to fire these cannonballs over the wood line now. And we'll take out the trap. And is now is attacking the walls. And so... There's no wall here from Blue wide open. There is a castle there, though, in that choke. I think that castle will be really important. For real, nobody told me that holding shift to queue up units, that's insane. 11. What? It's definitely one of those things that I just assumed people knew. I'm very shocked, especially some of the people who've been around for years. You guys didn't know that. Well, now you do. Hopefully, people later on YouTube benefit from that as well. Did you guys know? The other thing, too, is if you're too lazy for holding shift to queue up units, uh, past the hour mark, if you just press Alt F4, all your resources are spent instantly out of all your buildings. It's a weird little bug. 
but make sure you try it. Just press Alt F4, and it's crazy. So both players could do that right now, and they'd be a 200 pop. Now that's a joke, okay? Just for that one random guy who didn't know what Alt F4 did, that that's a joke. Don't press Alt F4 unless you want to quit the game. <laughs> I had to be real quick on that because I know that there would be one random guy it would be like winning a game and they want to go for the kill. <laughs> uh, see, as a streamer, over the years, I'd be like, guys, do you know what? How do I fix this? And everyone always says all that for. Without fail. So it's just my opportunity to get back at people. All right, so Blue losing a trep and losing onagers for the first time is going to lose the next trep as well. A sign of things to come, perhaps, though, from Blue, as Blue does still win the fight. And Blue also did wall this up. Man, what a game! What a game! This game, I didn't expect it to go on this long. Also, at this point, they are all out of gold. Oh, but Red could get the third relic. The monk's just, like, sitting there. Imagine he's gonna have back problems after holding this thing up. But all right. I would have liked to have seen a gate here, personally. Uh, I think that would suit Blue a little bit better. That way Blue could run in with Light Cav. But I guess we'll see. Lots of Siege Onagers from Red. And Red just kills his... <laughs> you know what, Red? Nobody saw that. We'll look away. <laughs> I was just about to say that the other player is doing such a great job with Onager Micro. I wonder what Red could do. <laughs> It's not really his fault. It was an unfortunate circumstance. But, uh, okay. Nobody saw that. How do I select all stables? Well, that's a hotkey. So that, that's different for everybody. I forget what the default is. You can just look in your settings for that. Wow, these two castles have stood for a long time. Thousands and thousands of years these castles have stood. And one of them falls. And now the light cover here! To take out the onagers. And Red tries to run, but accidentally clicks a tree. And so they they stay there for a bit longer than they should have, and all the onagers are gonna go down. What is happening, man? See now Red, who is doing such a decent job in the main fight, is split. And isn't able to focus on a push at the same time as the defense over here. Default for all stables is control shift L. There you go. Okay, finally, Blue gets a big friendly fire shot. Okay, but Red is also finally trying to push and run in with this. Oh, God, there's one Siege Onager waiting there. Yo, man. Oh, man. And he could move forward, but he's just going to wait. It's all a bait. It's all part of his plan. It's a ridiculous game. All right. Resources are sky high for both with everything, but... Oh, he didn't wait! He kills one bummer cannon, though. It could have been way worse. Mm, does Red see this? Red really doesn't want to take out the wall. Zoom! Worth it. Mangadai now. They're going to run in. Snipe a bombard cannon. Snipe a bombard cannon. Oh, my God. I'm annoyed for Red. Oh, my God. Blue, you're such a pest. That was so good. And now Blue can push over here. Blue has been consistently behind in population. It's just that Blue's micro is so much better. Bam. Okay, wait. That was an attack round? What? Okay, that explains Blue's micro. I didn't actually... Couldn't tell he was doing attack rounds! Oh my god! Lil Curry Muncha! Wow! So his control's been even better than I thought. Those were not right clicks. He's picking the spot, and now this army's walled out as he's taking back all this land. That's another castle that goes down for Red. And actually, guys, Red now does not have population space up to 200 pop. Red is going to need to build houses, and that, that might be something that Red doesn't realize in time. There's also quite a few villagers over here, too. You've got 8 villagers there, 12 villagers here, and another, like, 5 or 10 there. So if Blue were to get in and raid... To be epic. But I can tell you what's going to happen. Blue is going to forget 
like Cav exist again. And then Red is is pushed up, like pushed to the limit. And Red is going to make Lycav all of these stables. And Red's going to be back. And this game's going to continue. Now, I think a smart move from Red... Obviously, it's smart to run away if you don't want to die a horrible death. But maybe wall up here. I think that would be a smart play. And great job from Red. Red now realizes the hell situation. And is just going to spread them all out. This place them every which way. Every which way, that's fine. This is smart from uh, from Red. Another thing you could consider doing, I think Red might be thinking about it, is you could simply just onager cut the tree. Oh God, no, 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 no. Red, okay, Red spotted those. Red, 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 back away. Red, Red, back away. Blue is so patient with the onagers though. It's so good, man. But yeah, I thought that the trebs would be used on the wall from afar. Because now the onager can't hit them. Lots of pikemen going to protect the Trebs. And the Trebs are going to go after the town center. Mm, man, and there's always like one Onager. This Onager is 75 kills. Just one Onager camping out near everything. Oh my god. <laughs> Blue is a genius. <laughs> Blue is going to protect the Trebs. Might lose one. We'll see. Kills all of this. But then also, Blue is going trying to cut through the wood line. Not open it, but cut through a wood line just long enough to be able to hit those Trebs. Did end up losing one Trebuchet there, it looks like. But did also take out the TC. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I love how Blue's been playing this game. Oh, sheesh, man. That's so smart. Black Forest was made for players like this. Boom. Treb goes down. And Red's probably, like, getting so frustrated, man. Red's, like, what? Red's probably thinking, like, man, Mongols are OP. Like, how do I beat this Civ? But truthfully, it's just the way Blue's playing with them. Yeah, Red's Monk is still holding the Relic, too. But it's not like Red is hurting for gold. And now Red is going to wall this up. Wow, we're going to have a long game. All right. I mean, we already have had a long game. So thank you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube later and you made it to the two hour mark, say something. Sh uh, I'll shout you out. Well, I won't shout you out, but I'll see your comment and say that person made it. The analytics, like being a YouTuber, having content, let me just tell you, like, the stats that you see on videos, it just comes with the territory when you make content. But it's pretty wild, like, how many times people skip through a video or show up to a video and immediately leave. That's normal. When I watch videos, I do the same thing frequently. You won't catch me sitting through a two-hour Black Forest game, not missing a second. I get it. But uh, the people who stick around for the most part, I appreciate that. Blue has also done a great job with repairs. I think Red just tried to click to run the Trebs away and accidentally clicked a tree again. <laughs> Red has had some unfortunate instances of Micro. But Red's actually going to get out of there. So Red at least realized that he needed to give up there. Okay. Mm Gotta love how Red's mill foundation is still here from the Dark Age. <laughs> it's just... I mean, it's 85 wood for the Malians. It's not that big a deal, but it's just funny to me that it's still there. Okay. What's up, Jed? Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, so Red is, like, I believe just fully given up on this area. Now, guys, what's the one unit that Red could commit to that comes to mind that we have not seen? Because I think it's an amazing unit to go for. It's a unit that Red thought about, I think, before and then didn't think it would be very strong. Uh, that's going to be the champion. Now, you would have to go... I think he was only on Man-at-Arms. But he would need to go to Longsword and then two into Swordsman and then the champion. But champion's great against pikes. It's low gold cost as well, so champion's normally good in these types of games. And oh my god. We're going to watch it from Blue's perspective. Oh. What if Blue sees that? I think knowing Blue, Blue's going to see some movement there. And think, why would the units be going that direction? Oh. oh, 
and, and, and Blue's not prepared to fight over here. This is an area of peace. Also, the Trebs are there now, so Blue's going to look at that. Very smart from Red to do that. Oh, and it's open. It's open. Okay, so there's multiple attack signals. Now, Blue's also microing with this. Blue is 92 army. Uh, quick maths. Uh, 60 of it's over here. Oh, man. Now, Blue does have 40,000 wood. So losing Lumberjacks might not hurt that much, but losing villagers in this amount is going to be a big problem. And I think Blue has noticed. Now, Blue hasn't exactly saved the villagers yet and might not be able to, but Blue has no... Blue hasn't noticed! Blue clicked the Manga Die somewhere. Blue just noticed now. I think Blue tried to click the Manga Die here and there wasn't a hole and they were... They could go that way, so they ran that way for that reason. Oh, man. What a great job from Red. He's like, you want to deny the left side? I'm going to take the right side, fool. Also, the Arbalester waiting back here to eventually help. A very good unit if there's no Onagers. I like how Red has come in here, though, with no fear. Red brought their own Onager as well. We're going to get a bam on the Pikeman. Nope, one for the trap. Okay. 57 villagers for Blue. Now, Blue rang the bell, but... These villagers were so far away, they couldn't hear the bell. So they were not saved by the bell. And that puts Red in the driver's seat, in my opinion. Now, Blue breaks through over here. We could have a reverse scenario, and that would be hilarious. But it's very hard for Blue to think about that when Blue has to put out the fires in his base right now. Also, if Blue hangs on, I'm really curious to see what the Arbalests are going to accomplish for Red. <laughs> Because Blue has been a master with Siege Onagers. And Red's going to run away now. And you've got to think Red's going to group up the Arbs next. With these resources, you should not stop. I mean, there were situations in this game earlier where Blue had 90 population. And Blue eventually brought it back. But you do want to spend some of that food to create more villagers, for sure. Also, hello, Hymax. Oh, man. I mean, Red's economy is so exposed over here. Maybe that's where Red will send the Arbalest. No, the Arbalest are coming here. Oh, no. <laughs> this game is not over yet. Oh, jeez. And he also spent so much gold on them. But, Red, you can't forget about the other side. Well, I guess it's easy to when you don't have vision there anymore. Oh, this is such an epic game. This one Onager. This one Onager. You know Blue sees it. And Blue's going to be patient, because that's just the type of guy Blue is. Little Curry Muncha is going to clear out the cab. Oh, jeez. He's in over here, right? No nomads for the Malians. And oh, man. Oh, I'm so pumped. I mean, I think Red's looking over here at the moment. Blue clearly is as well. Oh, God. I right, Red, no offense, but I have no faith in you here. Oh, jeez. That's only one. There's going to be so many more shots. Micro to the side, Blue, because you're a god. Whoop! Get, get microed on, fool. Yeah, that's right. Meanwhile, villagers are dying. Houses are going down. Like, there are some big problems over there. And Red is also here to try and build stables, which I really like. But the Arbalest, all this army is going to go down. What a game. This is such a ridiculous game. Another big shot there. The Arbs now retreat. One stable goes up. That's not going to be enough. And Blue has forced a defensive castle from Red. And that's really smart thinking from Red. I'm glad Red noticed that. I'm glad Red dropped a castle there, especially because the relics are there. But it's 117 army for Blue. That's what happens in, in these types of games. If you kill that many villagers from someone, that's just more pop space for them to make army. So, you know, it's good to kill the villagers, but then you need to defend. Uh, for, you know, a short period of time. And then long-term, your economy should be better. Like, this is all going to look better for red. The blue un did unring the bell, though. Okay. Now, there was a there's an Onager now, of course. 88 kills on this Onager. And then there is a Treb as well. And red is going to make barracks. Uh, might lose a couple of these villagers, or all the villagers, actually, but will eventually make barracks, you'd think, and is sending the arbs this way. And that's the correct play. Uh, obviously, if the onager shows up, you're going to have a hard time. 
Yeah, just getting back to like a good healthy spam of pikemen and light cav could be really strong. All right. Now at higher elo, blue would immediately run through here, right? But I love the pacing of this game because it's it's not slow actually. It's not slow, but it's it's more relaxed. It's actually easier to follow too. This is the perfect Black Forest game. This is one of the best games I've ever seen, guys. 139 population for both players at this stage. Red's probably thinking, oh good, he doesn't have an onager here. <laughs> Red, you would be mistaken. <laughs> you would be mistaken. Oh god, not again. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, Red's trying to do something else on the other side. Red's walling that up. In the meantime, the onager is just wrecking. And the castle could go down as well. The production is not really there for red. The blues is getting taking much better engagements. The positive thing for red is that his castle killed 10 units. And a lot of the pikemen are disappearing, so that's good. But he has lost a lot of arbalest. Just think of the cost for the units we've seen. That castle needs to stay up. Here comes red with some enough army to clear this, though. Here comes blue with the follow-up. Blue also killed a villager there with two Mangadai guarding the middle passage. That castle needs to stay up. That is so important it's not going to stay up. That castle will fall here. This Onager survives 108 kills on this single Onager. He pays so close attention to it. It's wild. Oh, man, there's 60 arbs in queue for red. Oh, that's not the unit. But Okay, so if you're ever in this situation, though, and the army compositions are the same, and the Mongol player doesn't have Mangadai, you want to be going champion. Champion would be your best bet. Now, I'm not saying blue wouldn't kill a lot of the champions, but that would be a very strong option for you. And finally, the, the Trebs are going to go down. The Onager is going to go down as well. So, red might be able to take this ground back. And blue is coming over here with all the pikemen that experienced the battle on the other side. <laughs> Truly deserves a hero's name, <laughs> Ronager. <laughs> well, someone's been here the whole time. Yeah, hi, Max. This is the first game of the day. It has been one and a half hours, it has been incredible. And it's Black Forest, and it doesn't seem like this game is going to end anytime soon. Let's talk positives for Red. Red is back up with production. The production is insane. You also have villagers down here still, which is very sneaky, and I think could have an effect later on if Red wants to do something like Red tried here. The sneaky stables there to raid would be pretty strong. The other positive for Red would be three relics. The other positive Red uh, for Red, excuse me, is more villagers working on resources. 37 on food versus 21. 28 on wood versus 15. The negative for red is that Lil Curry Muncha is insane with Onager Micro. And so you're going to need to find an answer to that. I think it's possible. The thing that Blue seems hesitant to do, though, is really go for like an actual eco raid. I think it'll be easier to raid blue than it will to be able to raid red because red's got these castles kind of forming a line and then this castle Oh god, he lost that actually. Well I'm not so sure both players would be pretty open for raids And here's a lot of the armies getting healed up by the monks which both players have done What an incredible game man uh, They could run out of wood eventually however right now we have um 5,000 more trees. So, uh, let's just say I'd hope not. Redemption. Yo! Will he get block printing too? Okay, so redemption means you can convert enemy siege. And that's not something that Blue is prepared for. The monks don't have sanctity though, so they're super weak. And without block printing, you don't have the range to pull it off, I don't think. The onagers will have 9 range. The monks will have 9 range. With block printing, it'd be 12. Gotta love the line of buildings here for blue. I think this is really gonna help him. Oh, God. 
Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> and then the monk is going to convert a pikeman. So, <laughs> so unless he clicks the onager with those monks, he's going to have a big problem. And even if he does click the onager with the monks, yeah, you could tell these monks don't have faith, man. They're like, I know that I was told to believe in God here, but uh, I'm not seeing God at the moment, and I am seeing a siege onager. Bam. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> not again. 21 kills on this onager already. And it'll stay alive, too. It wouldn't surprise me if a villager came over here to repair it as well. That's just the type of player Blue is. A blue might actually lose it now, though. The Arbalests are going to clear up the pikes here. Okay, attack round blue. Bam. Oh, a little too close. All right, I believe in you. Bam. Boom! <laughs> Without fail, man. Without fail. And now, he's got insane production buildings. This was the weakness for this player, was production buildings. Now he's producing like a madman. Dang, all right. Almost a thousand kills for blue. That can't happen too frequently at this elo. Can you imagine a light cav raid, though? For, like, it's it's kind of hard for red to do it because blue has so many pikes. But blue could light cav raid right up the middle. It'd be so good. But then again, blue wouldn't be able to onager micro like this, so... A champion could make all the difference you can tell red has been scratching their head on what can i make against this what can i do and this far into the game i think red has tried everything except champion i think champion would have such a big effect here new tc for blue blue also who is down the 40 villagers is up to 70 now the blue realizes that more eco is needed blue's not going away anytime soon sappers Okay, that's villagers do more damage against walls. Uh, that's an interesting technology to research here, Red. Not sure what that tells us. But Red just might be looking for technologies that haven't been clicked yet, honestly. And that monk's gonna come over here and heal up now. Heal up the weak arbs. Recharge them. And believe me, they're gonna need it. Now, Blue's been making outposts everywhere. Has an outpost here. Has an outpost here. And I'd kind of like to see Blue... Oh, oh, Blue made outposts here as well. Interesting, okay. Now, I bet you Red forgot about this. It is possible that Red will produce a bunch of pikemen out of this. Upon seeing this. I still feel like having villagers here could have a big effect on this game with raids. Um... Nope, not really paying attention to it. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. <laughs> We've seen this movie before. <laughs> we know exactly what can go down here. Red is desperately trying to get into that sea janitor. Oh, wait a second. Will Blue see that? Also, the monk's just standing there. Oh, God. This is not going to go well for you. Oh, it, it does kind of go well. All right, well, he got more in there than I expected. Blue still with an impressive attack round. And let's see if if we see a repair here from Blue. And we don't. Okay, so the Onager goes down. Now the Arbalest should go for it. Now the Arbalest, like you read, you want to pull your pikes back towards your Arb buddies and let the Arbs clear. Well, the other Siege Onagers are over here right now. And this is where Blue will probably realize, crap, I need my onagers. And is going to wheel one over. <clears throat> but this is pretty nice. Enjoy it while it lasts, though, Red. Because you don't have the vision on this, and this could shock you. I'm doing it! Mom, I'm doing it! I can do my homework soon! I'm going to win the game! <laughs> Never mind, Mom! <laughs> it's going to be a while. <laughs> Oh, man. And they're so slow. Oh, God. The Siege Onager's faster than the Arbs. And Red, I mean, if this continues, Red might have no gold. Like, Red is spending all of his gold on Arbs. Pike Onager is all Blue really needs anymore. So, 
as blue kills his own units. I really think we could be getting close to the end in this game. And there's no raiding attempts from red. Red has tried the left side, was pushed back. Tried the right side, was pushed back. Tried the middle, was pushed back. I imagine it's hard to not feel frustrated in these instances. Because blue is just playing so well. Bam! More arbalesco go down. Oh, I forgot to... Hold on. Before this goes down... I just want to see how many kills it has. Nice snipe there from red, by the way. Because at least if you're close, you want to get it. Okay, 60 kills on that onager. Yeah, 60 kills before it went down. Yes. Now, you probably don't want to produce skirmishers. Yeah, red is just pretty much forgotten about that. It's funny how red was the one who had the production buildings in the production. And now it's a completely different story. I think it just could be the exhaustion setting. We've only got three barracks for red. A couple random buildings over here. Blue's ready, right? Blue's ready. Blue's got eight barracks always producing on this side. Yeah, and once blue takes out these buildings, blue will probably bring the trebs forward as well. I think blue's going to take this game. The classic, you played two hours to die like this taunt would apply here, obviously. It's been a very long game. Too long of a game, some might say. Not long enough, others might say. But, uh, you know, Red's tried some bomber cannons now. Like, I gotta snipe those onagers, but that's so tricky, right? Because, yeah, you do have the range, but you don't have the mobility. And you don't do near as much damage to units as siege onagers will. No more arbalest for blue. That's a positive. Still three relics. And Red resigns. Red left the game. I assume so anyways. And at 2 hours and 31 minutes, the game finally ends. Now, I think what this says about blue is something that you you should definitely stick with. Red resigned at a population that blue was at so many times in this game, and blue continued to fight. Blue had, was stuck, right? Was stuck in this area, and red had all of this control and the third relic. And Blue continued to fight, even with, like, 80, 85, 90 population. So, I mean, Red played well, right? Um, would have liked to see the GG there, but I don't even know if people at this ELO know how to type, so who knows. But, man, what a ridiculous game. And I think in the end, Blue, uh, you should just pick Onager Sips. <laughs> Pike Onager is insane. Honestly, just pick Celts in the, in the uh, future. I know having Mongols was an impressive aspect there because you had the drill upgrade, which made the siege fast, but that was impressive. Um, there's the resources collected in this game. Not the type of stat line you would want to see after you resign there if you're red. Uh, more wood, food, gold, stone collected. Look at the gold difference, though. That's not something you see every day. That's the Malian gold lasting longer, but that's also red getting access to both neutral golds. Collected way more of everything. What is that, like 65,000 more resources in a game? And then, of course, there's the KD. Um, what do we have here on this list? Military population. Tell me if you can see when the onager shots came in. <laughs> Boom. I bet you there was one there. bet you there was one there. Obviously, near the end there as well. Um, anything else we need to talk about here? Oh, uh, there's the total vill count. That was, again, impressive from Blue to add more villagers after that crazy raid. And what about the APM? Well, according to this, red is a bit faster, and blue is a bit more relaxed. And blue is definitely more methodical near the tail end there. Red seemed to be the faster player in the mid game for me as well. The so, Lil Curry Muncher, around 550 elo, gets a win. That's Lil Curry Muncher's fifth online win, guys. Fifth online win. And still has 14 losses. So impressive for him. I feel like Blue's a player, if it goes late, can beat anybody at like 800 ELO and below, possibly. After seeing this, I have the confidence. But that's tricky, right? Because you don't get Black Forest every time. On more open maps, I can see how Blue would struggle more. As I was pretty sure at one point that Red was going to get this victory. Um, hope people on YouTube enjoyed this one. This is obviously a stellar Black Forest game. Uh, it's good to, to mix in some close maps every now and then in the content. Uh, Red, if you ever end up seeing this one, buddy, don't be too frustrated. Blue just, just outclassed you. Uh, and I think there were, if you did a couple things differently, Red, you could have won this game when you had the left side control. Uh, One sec. 
I always like to verify if they actually spoke to each other, but no, they didn't. <laughs> no, no GGs, no chatter. Red just pieced out of there and said, see ya.